Some people say they would like knowing every little secret the government hides from us. Others disagree and say the comfort of the unknown is better. I am here not for anyone but myself. I won't give you my name or anything personal because what I'm about to share lies within the secrets the government doesn't want you knowing. I worked for NASA in cooperation with the International Space Station for all of nine years. I began my job as a tech that will help develop the communications between us down on Earth and the astronauts that are in space. My job is one of the most important parts besides the actual rocket that takes you to space. Without me, you wouldn't know what was going on up there. Think about if there was some type of emergency and communications were blocked. I would love the nights where they would call me at 3 in the morning because someone couldn't figure out how to press a button right. In all seriousness though, my job is very needed. When you deal with high stress jobs like these, you have to sign different contracts like NDAs for instance. It was mainly so we didn't go sell the United States space technology to the highest bidder. Or at least, that's what they say. Hell, if breaking an agreement is the worst thing I am doing here, then send me to hell because I sure know some people that will be meeting me there. Look, if they still want to hang Snowden after me, by all means go for it. Everyone knew the NSA was fishy anyways. Something the majority of the public don't know anything about was the science experiments that were taking place in space, specifically the ISS. These experiments were no average sophomore chemistry science experiments. These were the type of experiments that needed to be far, far away from Earth and any humans. For instance, nuclear energy experiments or nuclear warhead experimentation. That is just one of the things that happened while I worked for NASA. This sick shit was agreed upon by the Roscosmos aka Russia, JAXA aka Japan, ESA aka Europe and CSA aka Canada. When they built the damn space station, there were intergovernmental treaties and agreements that were signed. When I think of agreements, I never would have thought of this shit. I mean fuck Area 51 when you can have the ISS. The extraterrestrial technology that we found is up there running the damn station. What, you thought we took rockets filled with supplies to build a station all by hand? No. The United States used alien technology to make the International Space Station orbit. Call me crazy but I am one of the first to see this shit take place. Let me dive a little deeper into one of the worst experiments I've seen. It was a casual day at work when the administrative assistant Kelly called my desk. Hey, redacted, the director would like to see you in his office. Okay, tell him that I'm on my way now. Will do, Mr. Redacted. So the director, who everyone calls, is the boss man. He oversees all the projects here at NASA and wanted to speak with me about something. Walking into his office, he greeted me with a firm handshake, gesturing for me to sit. Sitting down in his comfy office chair, I asked. May I ask what this meeting is about? Of course, before I explain in detail about our next big project, I just need you to sign some small papers for me. With a small grin on his face, he slid a paper across the desk towards me with a pen in his other hand. I took the pen and read at the top of the paper, non-disclosure agreement. Doubling back to that, I asked, does this have to do with the ISS? Yes, we made a discovery and this can't be shared with anyone outside of this office. Giving me this stern look, he asked, understand me? Seeing his facial expression, I knew this wasn't something to mess with. I replied, of course, classified information. I took the pen and interested at this point, signed my name where the X was on the paper. I did so for the next couple of papers and then the director began to speak. So all of this paperwork filled out, I will fill you in on the new discovery. I nodded. 
On the expedition to Mars, our rocket had an interference with some outside force. It was almost as if it was blocking our communications with Earth. The team tried making contact, but unfortunately got no response. We received an emergency response 20 minutes after we lost connection. He then clicked his mouse a few times on his computer and brought an audio file up. He clicked play. This is Echo 142, Expedition Martha. We are having some communication errors with base. The source is coming from an out of view unidentified spacecraft. Subject is appearing on radar a mile to our left. Wait, what? Echo 142 to base. Our radar is now showing subject is now a mile to our right. It appears to be popping up in different locations every scan. Whoa, look at that. It's right in front of us, about 50 feet away from our aircraft. It's almost completely black. I'd call it transparent. Our ship is moving towards it without pressure being applied to the mechanics. Turn the damn ship, Mike! I am! It's overriding our controls! Shit! Shit! Look out! Seconds later, you hear the mic cut in and out with the static beginning to get louder and louder. I heard a loud bang and echo call for help. The static overcame the cries for help and something distorted began to speak. I couldn't make out what it was saying because it was using the static and longitudinal waves to say something. The director repeated the last part over a couple of times for me to make out what it was saying. I heard it say, Stop searching. Go home. The director stopped playing the file and said, we never got that ship back. It disappeared quite literally off of our radars. We came up with a few ideas of what happened to them. One is whatever they saw in front of them disintegrated their ship as soon as they came into contact with the unidentified flying object. Two, they were hurled into space at a velocity which would alter their course so rapidly that they would no longer be in the sun's orbit, basically leaving us nothing to go off of. All I could say now is, what do you want me to do? We want you to make contact with whatever is out there. Sir, with all due respect, I just don't think that's possible. He nodded and butted in. You see, that's where you're wrong. It is possible. We did it back in the 60s. You're telling me that the United States made contact with alien life back in the 60s? Well, you think we just go about spurting that to the media? No, this is why you signed those NDAs. If this gets mentioned to anyone about anything you just heard, your entire career will go to shit. And you'll be blacklisted by the higher-ups, you understand? This you see right there is when I knew something wasn't right. That threat he made to me brought a chill down my spine. I needed to find more about this. Yes, of course I understand. I just will need access to the same software you used back in the 60s. We have something way newer and up to date than that. Follow me. He began to take me to this door that was blocked off by two armed guards and an access code. The director typed it in and gestured for me to follow. We got into an elevator at the end of the hallway and he scanned his keycard and pressed the bottom floor. The elevator proceeded down to the last floor and made a clicking sound and a door behind us opened. There was a long wide hallway and a sanitation area. I followed his orders and walked through. Mist began to spray onto me and then a spout of air blew in every direction. After this was finished, a loud beep played through speakers and with that opened a door to the other side. We both entered into this room where he flipped the switch to reveal a large spacecraft in the middle of a large white hangar. I've been working here for 9 years and had no idea that there was a secret hangar with a UFO inside. 
He pointed both his arms towards it and yelled. Amazing, right? What is it? A UFO? No shit, this is something that you'll never see again in your entire life. He wasn't kidding about that. That would be the last time I was ever down there. You're damn right. Where did we find it? Last Christmas, off the coast of Panama. The Navy was called in before anyone saw it. Hey, I gotta ask, what does this have to do with making contact? Ah, uh, great question. Watch and learn. He then grabbed some type of switch and pulled it causing the ground to shake. I had to regain balance and looked up to see nothing except the director holding something I couldn't see in his hands. Where did it go? It's still here, just invisible, watch. He then flipped the switch again, causing the ground to shake and all of a sudden the aircraft began to reappear in front of me. I felt like pinching my arm or something because what I was seeing right now could not be real. I'm giving you permission to use the tech in here to make communication with whatever those beings out there are. See, this is what led me to understand what type of experiments were taking place 250 miles above me. After I was on the good side of the director, he gave me access to all the classified information that was taking place within the metal walls of the space station. After this day, I was rewarded with a new office twice as big and a raise. It was almost like they were bribing me to stay and finish their tasks for them. Having all this information available to me, I thought about what I could do. It was a Sunday evening when I was scrolling through old documents on my work computer and I came across a file that read Expo ISS. I double clicked the file and up came a video which I clicked on. The video opened and played. It showed this creature lying on a table. There were pipes leaking fumes to the right and three scientists all wearing hazmat suits. This creature was lying on the table with this long grey body that led up to its thick neck growing towards its massive jaw. You could see its veins pumping this metallic liquid up the neck. Its jaw connected with these sharp teeth that continued rose back like a shark. Its snout was a mix of grey and black curving out and down. It had two tiny black soulless eyes separated by its large snout. This monster made this vibrating tone with its vocal cords screaming in agony. The brain of this thing was partially coming out of its huge forehead. The tendons and muscle protruding with this blue oozing liquid pouring out. I saw one of the scientists reach his yellow covered arm near that thing and the table moved as this thing tried attacking the scientist. It popped the screws loose mounting the table to the floor. This thing was being held down by metal restraints holding its neck, arms and legs in place. I could see his hazmat suit start to boil from its arm as that blue ooze spurred it from that vile thing's mouth. That thing then bit a chunk out of the scientist's arm. I saw him fall back onto the floor. He began to seize and all of his muscles contorting and shifting. That same metallic liquid began to come out of his eyes and mouth. Something was different about him now. His eyes were completely black, but he wasn't moving. The two other scientists at this point left the room to lock in that creature and the deceased scientist. My stomach turned with what I saw next. The dead scientist twitched and broke his two arms to snap back into a crab walk form. His joints on his knees were now shifted completely around. He jumped onto the wall and started to climb like a damn spider. He now was directly above that creature and they were making eye contact. He took his fingers which were now twice as long with razor sharp nails and gouged his own eyes out. He began to stab those black soulless eyes at first causing the metallic liquid to shoot out like a fire hose. He repeated this until both black metallic covered eyes were in his hands. He then fed both of his eyes to that creature. The last thing the scientist did was press the emergency evac button, 
which sucked everything out, including the creature and the scientist, into space. My mind was flustered with horrible thoughts. I kept repeating him, gouging his own eyes out, and that liquid spewing out like a pressure washer. The video ended after that button was pressed. I then heard a slight knock come from my office door and I shot my monitor off. It was the director. Hey, just checking in on you to see how your work is coming. It's coming along, but you could really help me actually. Oh, how so? I need some information about what we know about the aliens and anything to do with the ISS. I think it could help me get somewhere on making contact with him. Let me see what I can pull up. I'm going to need some serious progression by next Friday though. This meant only one thing. The feds were about to come, aka the men in the dark suits. These are the people who oversee all the classified government projects. Ah, you gotta love surprise visits. Don't we all? I'll let you get back to it now. Thanks. Later that day, I got an email from the director with a couple classified files. I pulled them up on my desktop and began to read. April 6, 2015. Experiment 12 ISS Nuclear Energy Converter. This project was to see if they could convert nuclear energy into some type of viable resource to use down on Earth. June 21st, 2016, Experiment 26, ISS, Time Warp. This project consists of taking time itself and reconstructing it on a molecular level, making it easier to travel way faster in space. This failed and caused the hole to breach the side of the ISS, killing two crew in the process. December 17th, 2017, Experiment 52, ISS, Human Cloning. This project was a backup file if the world was to end and all the non-renewable resources on Earth ran out. We learned how to take the DNA of someone and make thousands of thousands of people and edit their gene group to change how they look or what gender they are. May 9th, 1962, ISS. Experiment 72 Extraterrestrial Contact This is the exact day that we made contact with them back in the 60s. There is a clip that I played in all black and white. This is a big day for the United States of America. I, John F. Kennedy, as the President of the United States of America, like to honor NASA for the achievement of contact with extraterrestrial beings. My screen showed an error. Video corrupt. Please try again. Was I just watching Kennedy tell everyone about the first time they made contact with aliens publicly? There is no way that NASA, the CIA, or the NSA would allow him to tell everyone that aliens are real. That would just cause mass panic, wouldn't it? Hell, here is another conspiracy why JFK was assassinated. I continue to read about this experiment. Notes We sent out multiple messages hoping for a response back. We are sending it within the same zone that we received transmission from the UFO. It has been a week since last transmission and we just received the call back. Time measurements read that it took 3 days to transmit so the object has to be a few light years away. Loud static with a low vibrating voice saying the higher-ups are shutting down our unit, until next update. So they had the same exact frequency come in, just like the missing Mars unit said they experienced. Something tells me I'm already this far, so no point in going back now. For my job however, I myself made contact with them. I haven't told the director yet, since I am afraid of what to do. The transmission was sent to the ISS through my communications launchpad, where I then had the satellites on the ISS redirect towards the dark side of the moon. Yes, I know people say some weird stuff happens where we can't see, but now I know. I was getting readings from high frequencies just over yonder from the moon. I wrote this down in the logs and then I looked at the wavelengths I was getting back. 
The only way something could put out super high and then super low frequencies was if you were a dog whistle. These were supersonic frequencies though. As I was recording the waves, they all stopped as fast as they started. I sent out another request to try to get something back. I was now getting readings that there was an aircraft 200 meters away from the space station. I squinted my eyes knowing that whatever was just 250,000 miles away traveled directly next to the space station within microseconds. What I just witnessed was by all rules and laws of physics, impossible. I then got back a high frequency, which was in the meter, where I could dilute it to become an audio file. I converted it and pressed play. Those sick creatures, all together in unison, vibrated their vocal cords, sending a growl through the transmitter. We found you. 